What's up, everybody? My name's Russ. RWGresearch.com is my website. We're out for a drive. I gotta go do some stuff, take care of some things, and I thought I'd take you along. So, uh, I honestly don't have any direct thing I want to share with you. Um, I, I have no idea, to be honest. I do really like this view, though. It's pretty cool. Actually, I love this view. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to chat for a while, but unfortunately I'm going to be on the highway, so we won't be doing much chatting there. Um, but yeah, I just uh, want to say thank you to all of you who uh, support what I do. Um, if you'd like to do that, you can go over to Patreon, uh, put my Bitcoin account, and also my PayPal. You can do either which one you'd like. Feel free to... Uh, Share the love if you so need to do so. I will uh, happily accept your offerings, but to be honest, uh, we're all doing good things in the world, so uh, do uh, do good with what you have and what you can, and uh, the Lord will reward you. So yeah, I, uh, I talked to you guys last time about some biblical stuff. I think I'll still talk about that, but I'm going to start off with talking about some of uh, the work that I've been doing with Newman and uh, some of Jim Murray's understanding and uh, it gets pretty heavy. There's a lot of details. There's a lot of deep stuff to talk about. And one of the things is the difference between frequency resonance and energy resonance. You might be thinking, what? Frequency resonance versus energy resonance. Yeah, there is a difference. One is based on frequency where you get amplitude of voltage or current voltage or current so the difference between energy amplification and frequency resonance or energy resonance and frequency resonance is the fact that we actually amplify the energy in the system not just the current or the voltage and it's also slightly different because when you think about uh, frequency resonance, you're kind of thinking about pushing a girl on a swing and you get to put a little bit of energy in each time and you amplify that to a maximum potential until she flips over the top of the bars or only makes it halfway and does catastrophe. But energy resonance is different. Energy resonance, it's... Uh, Think of it as a slingshot. Now what the heck, a slingshot? Okay, not a slingshot, but the slingshot effect. Okay, what is a slingshot effect? And a slingshot effect is when a satellite goes around a moving planet, the gravitational mass is converted into acceleration upon the satellite, and the satellite will go around that mass, and if it goes around it in the right direction, it will accelerate towards it and then slingshot it around the backside and the net result or the uh, the end result I guess I should say is the fact that you will actually achieve a faster speed in the satellite than what you were moving before now because the planet is so big and the satellite is so small that the, the planet doesn't really notice anything now, there is actually a negative effect on the planet, but it's so small that it really doesn't matter. And that is how I believe, anyway, that feels like the correct direction to describe energy resonance. Energy resonance is amplification through a slingshot effect. And slingshot effect versus resonance of a... Uh, swing or something like that and a girl on it or a boy or adult but it's different so anyway there's something to think about energy resonance and the power out of a system is only as great as the energy in it so if you can amplify the energy then you can technically amplify the power and amplification is different than a amplitude gain right resonance frequency resonance is an amplitude gain but uh, energy resonance is different energy resonance is literally talking about 
amplifying the energy in the system okay so it's a uh, it's hard to wrap your head around um, you can look into parametric oscillators and stuff like this and kind of get your head wrapped around that stuff but there's a really great paper by Murray Jim Murray really really great paper and I will post it in the description along with all the other links and you can check it out it's really cool he has a bunch of stuff that I think is worth reading because it just makes sense and he uh, says he derives a lot of this from Tesla's work and he probably does well a lot of his own work actually but the original point is that if Tesla did it at one point then he can do it too and if you energy if you amplify the energy in the system and all you're doing is moving energy around and if you put the load between the two points where you're moving energy and you have amplification not ampla uh, not amplitude only resonance right current or only voltage but instead both then you can you can create a totally different system uh, so anyway that's kind of what I've been looking for I've been looking for how that plays out and it's all based on nonlinearity and using time to your advantage if you can change the parameters while the time is constant or I guess in a in a in a different time I don't have a, my head wrapped around that yet but um, maybe eventually I have no idea if the audio is going to be any good because now we're on the highway but uh, yeah basically I uh, should finish this conversation later because we're going super fast on the highway and I don't know if you can hear me at all but um, uh, yeah it's really interesting stuff we're studying and I highly recommend checking out the links I'm going to post and get your head wrapped around some of these basic principles and they're not easy to understand but uh, if you put your mind into it and you really really dig into it it's written in a pretty uh, it's it's written complex and then it's written sort of easier it's usually the important parts are written in two different ways so that you can really understand what it is that he's trying to show you and it's pretty awesome stuff so highly recommend it um, if you think about it you know if the uh, if you took a a slinky and you flung it back and forth left and right left and right your oscillation is equal to the amplitude that you can gain however if you grab the slinky halfway then it would accelerate faster and its frequency would change also faster and you'd end up with a system where you can actually amplify that by grabbing it at different places as it's going and uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to describe but I need a much better analogy to really describe it but the slingshot effect is uh, the best analogy I can describe look up uh, NASCAR and the slingshot effect effect thanks to Matt for that thought on NASCAR because in NASCAR they do drafting where they get behind another car and they if, if done right you can slingshot around the car and actually go faster as a group by drafting and then go even faster by slingshotting around that group of cars and yet the car by itself couldn't go any faster than that so it's like what you can go faster than the motor will let you by using this method of a slingshot so you're literally getting more out of that system than what it's capable of during that instant in time and it's all time varying and if all this is done on quarter cycles so one cycle you slingshot and the second you gain that back or you use that that gain potential to your benefit if you do it all right it appears you could change the way that you get your energy and power and work done in your system so it's all time varying non-linear um, acceleration um, he also talks about frequency what was it called uh, the Doppler effect so using the harmonics and changing your reference point so for instance if you were on the planet and the satellite went around you and slung shot away 
relative to that you wouldn't see too much of a change but I guess this is a bad example because I'm describing it wrong but what I'm saying is if you were on the planet you'd see one thing if you were on the satellite you'd see another thing and if you were on nothing if you were a third point observing this situation you'd see a totally different thing and that's what I mean it's relative to the point that you're viewing it from or where you're taking the measurement from accordance to the rest of the system and that's that's the basic fundamentals of of a lot of Jim's work it's pretty amazing and uh, Jim what's Jim is trying to share and demonstrate in his uh, devices mechanical and electrical is an energy resonance that's an amplification of energy he also uses um, nonlinear situations nonlinear by either capacitance or by inductance changing them according to the time and creating this slingshot effect and uh, it's pretty amazing um, the slingshot effect is something he, he, that I haven't seen him ever mention but um, someone else actually mentioned it in one of their analysis of Jim's work and that's where I originally got the idea from and it, it does make perfectly good sense so um, yeah the idea of resonance in the energy portion of your system is something that most people don't look at and using uh, using the harmonics and he writes in there very clearly that uh, you lose like 26 percent of the total energy in your system by achieving frequency resonance instead of energy resonance which uses all the harmonics so very interesting stuff uh, very interesting stuff indeed so anyway, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to express, I think. Um, I was reading the Bible, and I was in, uh, was it Philippians? I think it was Philippians. And, uh, you know, sometimes I worry about situations, and I don't fully understand everything. And uh, in there, it's really nice. He says, uh, you know, don't worry. Instead, let me... You know, do the worrying, and you just, uh, you know, pray, pray about what you want to see. And uh, it's, I thought that was a pretty good verse. I can't quote it directly. Um, he also, uh, in there, it also, it's pretty cool. He talks about, uh, you know, living, living on this planet, living this life, or, um, or dying and going to your new home your ultimate home and uh, the second one dying and going to your ultimate home is actually a uh, a better like thing like that's the ultimate thing right but at the same time you want to live in this space live in this place because there are people here that you want to reach because you want them to also be able to achieve the same that you achieve so it's kind of cool because you know some people see it greener on the other side but uh, you got to work hard to get where you're going. And uh, working hard doesn't mean uh, not paying attention to everything else. And also in there, uh, there's a really good, uh, really good quote or uh, section. I, unfortunately, I can't quote these directly. There's a really good uh, section in there where they talked about, uh, um, you know, paying attention to uh, to other people, basically not being so selfish. And uh, one guy left me a comment on my last video playing cards that he had to unsubscribe because uh, I took on too much because I was and I was being, you know, I don't know, I don't know exactly what he was trying to say, but the way I took it was uh, I took on too much, so I didn't have time for anything else or anybody else, and. Sometimes things take you on too much. You don't really have a choice. And I'd have to say that that's kind of that sort of situation. You try to move and set up a new lab and actually do progress while still in, fully interacting with everything you normally do is almost, well, it's doable, but it's extremely difficult. So anyway, 
I thought that was interesting because I, I still do my best to interact with everybody I can and I'm definitely not a selfish person so if I take on too much for myself it's not because uh, I wanted to ignore everyone else around me it's because things pile up fast it's hard to say no especially when you're trying to help everybody but that's the way these things work so yeah I have no idea if this highway ride is going to actually work uh, yeah I have no idea but uh, there's a lot of good stuff in there it's only like four pages long or five pages long Philippians pretty sure that's the one I read I like that one a lot there's a lot of good inspiration in there and uh, the, the one I, I took away the most is uh, not to worry you know worrying just stresses you out don't don't stress out let faith guide you and even though I have these things in my head and I know these things you know it's really easy to fall back and uh, get yourself a little screwed up in the head on how you think and how you do things and living by faith is uh, is challenging at times but I I do know it's the best way to live in my opinion then you don't have to worry and if you don't worry you can focus on what you're doing if you can focus on what you're doing you can actually get a lot more uh, a lot more accomplished in the short amount of time we have on this place so I think it's pretty cool my voice is actually getting hoarse that's kind of crazy well uh, this is kind of a boring drive isn't it the highway what the heck oh it's like uh, almost nine o'clock at night and uh, I'm just uh, doing some more of what I need to do Copper! Good thing I wasn't going like 100 miles an hour. I was going real slow and just hanging out over here in the left lane. I mean the right lane. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Okay. That's cool. I really have no idea how, uh, how the audio sounds, but I really hope it turned out. So, yes, as normal, read the Bible. You know, I was actually having a really hard day. I was having a bit of a stressful day, and I just stopped. I stopped what I was doing, and I said, I need a break. And I went and read that, that book, Philippians. And I'm so glad I did. It eased my mind, you know. Say your thanks for what you have and rejoice and ask God for what you want. Uh, there's actually a really interesting, uh, interesting story I'd like to tell you. And the story relies on, I needed some office furniture and I needed some shelving for my garage. And I just, and, there, and we have heavy trash day every other Tuesday, which is cool. And I, I live in an area that people like to throw stuff out apparently. And most of it's not too bad. So I was actually, uh, you know, I was trying to uh, be thoughtful and I said, you know, I'm not gonna build a shelf, I'm just gonna wait. And uh, I'm gonna ask that I find what I need tomorrow on heavy trash day. And I'll be darned, there it was. Uh, the two shelves I needed, almost all the way to the ceiling, exactly what I needed, in pretty good shape. And it was, exa it was exactly what I needed. It was what I was going to build. It was even better than what I could have built. And two weeks went by and I said, man, I, I, really need, uh, I really need a table or something. And I would really like to have a desk. You know, I really need a desk for my, um, my office space that I'm trying to put together so I can work on stuff in there little 3d printing room and uh, I said I really would love to have a desk so, but I didn't ask for a desk instead I drove around that day not realizing I needed the desk and I forgot about it and I said uh, I said Lord I don't know what I'm looking for today so just show me what I need show me what I need and uh, I drove around for a while I was about ready to quit and I was almost back to my house and there was this something on the side of the road. I, I couldn't quite tell what it was. And I was like, oh, I was like, yeah. 
was like, I could really use whatever that thing is. I went and looked, and there it was. A whole corner desk. I'll throw a picture of it in here so you can see it. A whole entire desk. And... Oh, I'm supposed to get back on the highway. And it was freaking amazing. I am actually going to go this way and ignore where I'm supposed to go. But, um, yeah, it was freaking amazing. A full desk sitting there. And I asked for that exactly. So, so I actually... Uh, I gotta try to find my road. Okay, I'm supposed to go this way. So, yeah, I, um... Next week, um... I guess next week or a couple couple days from oh yeah I guess it is uh yeah it's gonna be in about another week um I asked for an office chair the Lord find me an office chair I don't have a good chair to sit in so we'll see what happens uh if I find an office chair before I get this video posted I'll let you know but it's it's just it's just amazing and I've been finding all kinds of things I need through time and uh, sometimes good things are worth waiting for. Actually, all the time. Good things are worth waiting for. Being patient, not hurrying through a situation, even though you really don't know what, you know, the final outcome is going to be, and you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, and you think you have to do it tonight, or whatever, is just not true. Well, I'm in a turn lane. It's just not true. And, uh, always stop. And so, yeah. You know, putting your uh, putting your faith into stuff like that is uh, is really amazing. And some of you guys are like, ah, oh, it's just a bunch of coincidences. Well, I tell you what, I mean, if I counted all the quote coincidences, right? I think everything happens for a purpose. Most of the time, people say everything happens for a reason. Well, a reason's not good enough for me. Everything happens for a purpose, and a purpose that you cannot understand most of the time you can't understand it and sometimes you never understand why it happens and other times many years down the road you're like you know now I realize why that happened and it's I do not believe that it's just something that just happens and you look back and go yeah I'm putting two and two together now too many things and I could go into an extraordinarily long conversation about this principle about my life and I'm not gonna do that here and now but um, yeah wait south I'm thinking I'm all confused I'm trying to listen to my GPS and talk to you at the same time so I think I'm gonna let you guys go I love you all very much God bless you have a most wonderful day hopefully this conversation was helpful oh good Left turn, green light. Whee! Good thing nobody's really around here. So, anyway. Whee! Four miles. I got four miles or more to drive yet. Well, I just wanted to, you know, tell you guys that story about finding stuff. And, uh, I really do believe everything happens for a reason. And there's no such thing as a coincidence. My life is a big giant reason and I have a big purpose to fulfill and I, I can't quite see the end result except for uh, except for God will finish what he started and he will use each and every one of us for the gifts that we have and I'm a living proof of that I am a living proof that that is true and it's uh, it's pretty amazing to be a living proof and what you accomplish in life you know nothing compares to the story you can tell right the story that people can see how God's using you and you're in life. That's the most important part, in my opinion. Oh, it's all quiet now. All right, well, love you guys. I'll see you another day. Peace out. Mm -hmm. So there's power in energy.
And if you can amplify the energy, you can amplify the power. And if you can extract power using non-dissipative means, using the uh, current and voltage out of phase, then you're not extracting what we consider real power. Instead, we're extracting reactive power. That's a whole new, whole new thought process. Completely different than conventional. Everyone wants to get rid of the reactive power. And here, we're trying to get rid of the real power and use only reactive power. What a completely different mindset. I mean, completely different. Nothing, nothing is, that's just completely different. It goes, it goes in the opposite direction of everything we normally try to do. And that's a new concept for me to grasp, let me tell you. But the concept seems to work. The SERPs device that Paul Babcock and Jim Murray both have built and shown and proven um, seem like it's not possible, but as long as you never let a dissipative load, right, if you never let the prime mover see the dissipative load, like a resistor, then you can dissipate reactive energy as long as you never, it never gets back to the prime mover. So Jim uses a transformer and he, and he puts the load between the secondary and a capacitor and he oscillates it back and forth and he switches the current and voltage. He, during the peak of the cycle, he switches the current into the reverse direction as it was going and changes the inductance at the same time and sends it back into the system. And uh, that's, man, that's a completely different uh, way of doing things because the primary side, or if you were to measure that, you would see completely reactive power or, or no real power actually, right? Because you have a sum of zero, the current in the negative side and the voltage in the positive side generate a negative power and the positive current and positive voltage generate a positive power and the two cancel each other out so you're moving real things around real energy around and you're doing work with the uh, the energy that's moving around and you're dissipating the energy while the prime mover cannot see it I mean that's what he's doing and it makes really good sense So, it's worth looking into. Let me put it that way. Funny thing is, is he says all this stuff, you know. He puts all this stuff up there. He puts all these things up there, puts it in his patents, talks about it in his videos, and all you have to do is comprehend what he's trying to say and what he's doing. Now wrap your head around it, which is goes against everything that's usually taught. It's completely reverse, and it should work. So uh, we'll see. Now he does claim that he's not creating energy from nothing. He's not saying he can loop the system. He's just saying he's using the the energy in such a way that generates the result he's looking for which is that the net work done and the absolute work done are different. That's the difference. So if you look at the absolute work done on the primary side, what do you see? You see basically nothing, right? You see no real power dissipated. So it's pretty crazy. But on the other side, you have a bunch of dissipative heat in the resistor in between the secondary and the uh, capacitor moving that energy back and forth reactively so there you go all right for real i'm out peace love you bye bye